Welcome to the third and final part of my nitro finishing tutorial. In this part, I'll show you how to sand and polish the nitro to achieve a high gloss finish. Now in parts one and two of this tutorial, I showed you how to prepare your work and how to spray the nitro properly. I'm gonna assume you followed the steps in these first two parts and that your finish has had enough time to properly cure. If this is not the case, I recommend you check out parts one and two first. Now before we start, let's take a look at what I've accomplished so far. I started by sanding the body and grain filling it. I then made sure everything was completely flat and smooth before I sprayed the sanding sealer, primer, color and clear coat. The body has had about six weeks to cure since I applied the last clear coat. And this is what it looks like now. Everything still looks quite good, however in some areas the wood grain is somewhat visible. That's because nitro shrinks quite a bit as it dries. Now this is perfectly normal, but it does mean that the finish needs to be sanded flat again. Once that is done, I can move on to the polishing process. What I'm going to do first is take off the handle I used in the spraying process. Of course, at this point, the last thing you want is to damage your finish. So I've put down this work mat with a soft towel on top to protect the finish. Other soft surfaces will of course also work. Just make sure that whatever you're using doesn't contain any chemicals or sharp parts that might damage the nitro. That being said, let's take a look at what we're trying to achieve here. So let's say this is what the nitro looks like now. Obviously to achieve a high gloss finish, it needs to be flat and smooth. So the first thing we'll do is flatten it out by sanding it. I like to start with 1000 grit sandpaper. That allows me to take away material relatively quickly, but not so much that there's a great risk of sanding through the finish. After sanding it flat with 1000 grit sandpaper, it'll already feel very smooth. In reality, however, the surface is covered in tiny scratch marks. That's also why it will look kind of milky and not very shiny. So to remove these scratch marks, I'll sand it with even finer sandpaper. And it will look something like this. It'll look and feel even smoother, but it's still not good enough. So I'll sand it again with even finer sandpaper. And at a certain point, the scratch marks will be extremely fine and I'll move on to polishing the finish, which will help in removing even the tiniest scratch marks and will get me that high gloss shine. So let's start by taking a look at the sanding process. So as I just mentioned, I like to start the sanding process with 1000 grit sandpaper. I use it primarily to flatten out the finish. So as soon as it's flat, I'll stop and move on to a finer grit. From that moment on, the goal is simply to remove the scratch marks left by the previous grit. I personally like to progress from 1000 to 1500 to 2000 grit. After that, I'll start polishing. Normally, I do my polishing with a buffing machine. However, in this tutorial, I'm going to do the polishing by hand, since I promised that no specialist tools would be required. That's why I will sand the finish with 2500 grit sandpaper as well, even though I normally wouldn't. In this case, it'll make the hand polishing a little bit easier. Now, all of the sanding that I'll do in this video will be wet sanding. That means I'll use water as a lubricant. That'll leave the surface a little bit more smooth compared to dry sanding, but the main reason to wet sand for me is that it doesn't clog up the sandpaper. That means you can sand an entire guitar with just a few pieces of sandpaper. Just make sure your sandpaper is suitable for wet sanding. Now you may have noticed that I haven't drilled any holes yet, for example for the pick guard. That's because those holes will fill up with water during the wet sanding process. They will then swell up and they can even crack the finish. So I like to drill all of those smaller holes after sanding and polishing. Now if they're already there, I like to put a small drop of glue into them to prevent the water from entering. I'll start by filling up a bowl with water and a small drop of dish soap. I'll soak my sandpaper in the bowl for just a few minutes. Then I can start sanding. I personally prefer doing all of the sanding by hand, as it gives me full control over what I'm doing. There is however a danger of applying uneven pressure, which will create an uneven surface. So if you're new to this, I definitely recommend using a sanding block. 
As for the sanding itself, I like to sand in straight lines using light pressure in one direction only. In my experience, this creates the most unobtrusive scratch pattern. Also, I check my sandpaper frequently for any buildup. You can use the water to clean it if necessary. Things to look out for while sanding are any roundovers and sharp edges. The nitro will usually be a little bit thinner in those areas and it is very easy to sand through. So take away only as much material as absolutely necessary and don't apply too much pressure. Now when the surface is wet, it's quite difficult to spot any imperfections. So I use a dry cloth to wipe off the water every now and then. That allows me to properly inspect the surface. What I'm looking for are any low spots. These are indicated by shiny spots and tell me that the area needs a little bit more sanding. You're done when the surface is flat and smooth and has a uniform milky shine. It is then time to move on to a finer grit, in this case 1500. Before I do that I clean my work thoroughly with mineral spirits and I get a fresh bowl of water to make sure that I won't have any 1000 grit particles on my 1500 grit sandpaper. The goal is now to remove those scratch marks left by the 1000 grit sandpaper. This shouldn't take long at all, but be sure to cover every part of your work. From this point on, it becomes quite difficult to capture the finish on camera. But when you're working on it at home, you'll know when you're there. Again, I'm looking for a uniform, slightly milky looking finish with a slightly finer scratch pattern than the 1000 grit sandpaper. I'll continue this process until I reach the 2500 grit sandpaper. Don't forget to clean your work and your water every time you switch grids. When you reach the higher grids, the finish should already become quite shiny, meaning that the milky look will start to disappear. Also, there shouldn't be any major scratch marks left. Here's a comparison between the 1000 grit finish and the 2500 grit finish. You can clearly see how much more reflective the 2500 grit finish is. I've now created a nice even finish with the 2500 grit sandpaper, so I'm ready to move on to the polishing stage. Now this is probably a good time to tell you that hand polishing a guitar is a lot of work. It is extremely time consuming and quite exhausting. It is however a very good way to find out how nitro reacts to polishing and what is required to achieve a high gloss finish. A buffing machine obviously does the job a lot faster, but there's also a greater chance of burning through the finish. Now I would normally do the polishing with my buffing machine, but as I mentioned in part 1 of this tutorial, I want this to be doable without the use of any specialist tools. That's why I will hand polish this body. Now before we start, let's take a quick look at polishing compounds. I like to see them as a liquid sandpaper. And just like sandpaper, it consists of millions of small particles that'll take away material just like sandpaper does. And just like with sandpaper, there are very coarse and very fine polishing compounds. For example, this is the coarse Stumac polishing compound. And when I rub it in between my fingers, I can actually feel those particles in there. Of course, a finer compound wouldn't allow you to feel those particles. Of course, there are a variety of polishing compounds available on the market, but as I mentioned in part 1 of this tutorial, I will be using the Stumac polishing compounds, simply because they're available practically worldwide. If you've done a good job sanding, you'll only need to fine compound and a swirl remover. If you come across any major scratch marks during the polishing process, you might need the medium compound to rub those out as well. Now, the polishing process itself is quite simple. I just take some polishing compound and I apply it to the cloth. Then I start rubbing. Similar to the sanding process, I like to work in one direction. I'll rub at a fairly high speed until the compound starts to get drier. As soon as the cloth starts to heat up, I'll start moving on to the next spot. Of course, the higher the polishing speed, the hotter it'll get. It's good to get a feel for this since it's something to look out for when you start polishing with a machine. Nitro is extremely easy to burn through, so you should be aware of that before you start working with power tools. Again, don't work on a single spot for too long. Even though it might not feel like it, there's still a risk of polishing through the finish, and at this stage, that is something you really want to avoid. Just like when sanding, watch out for sharp edges and roundover. 
the finish will be thinner in these areas. Now as I mentioned before, I'll start with the fine compound. Depending on the quality of your sanding job, you might have to start with the median compound. You'll immediately start seeing the difference when you start polishing. Now it's very difficult to show you what exactly it is you want to see before you can move on to a finer compound. But let's just say you want to get rid of all of the scratch marks at this stage. And you basically want to go at it until that's the case. For an entire body, it'll definitely take a couple of hours to get it perfect, but the results will be very rewarding, so be patient. After I'm done with the fine compound, I will hit it with the swirl remover. This is much less time consuming than the initial polishing phase, since all of the scratch marks are already gone. It'll really start to shine now, but as a finishing touch, I like to polish it once more with this Rupus Diamond Ultra Fine Compound. This will really give it that mirror finish. This compound might not be available in every country, but there are plenty of similar products out there. And after many hours of polishing, this is what the body looks like now. And I have to say I'm quite happy with the way it turned out, especially since it's been quite some time since I last hand polished the finish. Of course, the best way to properly show you the quality of the finish is by taking it outside. And here it is. In this tutorial, I've really tried my best to show you what is needed to create a finish like this at home, without using expensive tools. And I do hope that all of this has been useful to you. Now, if your finish didn't exactly turn out like this one, don't worry. When I first started out finishing guitars, my finishes were far from perfect. It usually takes a while to properly get to know the nitro and to be able to create a nice finish. I do hope that with these videos, I've been able to speed up that process for you a little bit. That being said, I thank you all for watching. And if this tutorial has been helpful to you, please subscribe to the channel to catch any future guitar building tutorials. Thanks again and see you next time.